What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the NSB Virtual Sessions. I'm your boy, Nix. Joining me once again, it's been a while, but they're back on the back on the podcast with me is my boy, DJ Jeepy. What's up? And the one and only Mr. Ravi Sundu. What up, what up? And today, today we have a very, very special guest. Um, it honors me to introduce one of our favorite artists uh, from the team known as Delhi to Dublin. Joining us today, Mr. Sunju. How's it going, brother? Good, man. What's up, everybody? What's up, what's up, man? Ready? Right. Yeah, man, uh, chilling, here, chilling. Man. Glad to have you on here. Joining us all the way from uh, what we call the Great White North. Um, not so snowy over there, though, right? It's mostly rain. Oh, man, we're evergreen up here, man. Pacific evergreen. Northwest, we get so much <laughs> rain. We barely get snow. Ooh, so what do you, I mean, so what, so what is it looking like right now? Uh, well, it's, uh, you know, it was high overcast today, about 10 degrees Celsius. <laughs> uh, yeah, a beautiful day today, man. It was sunny. This week's been awesome. 10 um, degrees Celsius, man. It's about what 10 degrees. What's that? You got times by two plus, plus nine 30. or something? Plus yeah, 30? times two plus 30. So... <laughs> we'll come back to that. We'll degrees? come back to the math, right? <laughs> it's about, 50, than 50. about 50 degrees. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. That's cool, man. I got so, there, man. So, Mr. Mr. How are you doing and how's it how you been hanging during this whole year, man? It's been a little rough. I mean, we're all uh, trying to cope with this situation that we're in. Obviously, we're all performing artists and you are uh, a part of a team that, you know, we really love seeing perform and there's no performances going on right now. So what have you, what have you been up to? What have, you been, what have you been doing during COVID? Well, man, it's been long. You know what I mean? Like, so I guess it started and it was kind of like, you know, like no one knows what, what was going on back then. So uh, I think it was a good opportunity for me. I started meditating um, almost two hours a day in the beginning oh. of this whole thing. Uh. So that was like, you know, something I wanted to do. I'm forced to be home. So, and it's like, um, I've always kind of, you know, I, the spiritual world and all that is uh, not all that, but it's everything. And it's also like, I'm used to meditate. I kind of stopped and I wanted to get back into it. And then I was just like, I was introduced to Joe Dispenza. I don't know if you guys have heard of Joe Dispenza, but like he comes from the quantum physics side of everything. So like meditation and, and spirituality, it's all explained through science now. It's, it's like, it's science, you know? So his meditations are really interesting to me. And it's like, so I go into like sensory deprivation, man. Like eye mask in the dark, in the room, headphones in. And I'm just like, it's just like, you know, it, it's pretty awesome. So I really enjoy that. And I started making a bunch of music. Um, I had the space, you know, in terms of like mental space and capacity to start writing solo music and doing solo stuff. Um, I had kind of started in like September last year. And I just kicked it, man. Like, you know, you can make demos at home so easily. Like, beats are just there. You know, whether you use those or not, like, it's just good to practice with, like, total relevant beats wherever you want. Like, everything at your fingertips, man. So, you know, my rough days, it was kind of like, what's going on? I don't know what's going to happen. But really, this has been such a blessing for me, man. I made, like, so much music. And... I feel more, you know, grounded than ever, like literally, right? Like I'm used to taking, I mean, last year, I would have taken 40 to 50 flights, but the year before that I took 75 flights. And to go from that to like seriously just being grounded, it, it's a good, it's good for the mental health. And I say that with the fact that I know I'm, I'm a very blessed person of where I live, um, how, how it was handled up until now you know, with COVID and all that kind of stuff. Like we are lucky and I live on a small island. So I'm pretty, in my, you know, like I'm in this bubble of my own. So like I, I recognize my privilege here. But having said that in my life, like these, this is, this is what I'm, these are my parameters. And within my parameters, I think I made the most of it. Like, having a good time. That's good, man. Um, so being grounded, like, are you, the adjustment to, you know, going back to, you know, or not going back to but the adjustment from you know traveling so much for events and all this stuff um uh the initial hit that you take when you when you stop doing it was was it hard to adjust for that or is it something that you kind of had to come into terms with 
I think it comes in waves. Mm -hmm. You know, like it wasn't like, oh my God, at first it was like, you know, this is great. I don't have to go tour. Like it gets, it's a lot of, I guess it's taxing, right? Yeah. Um, and like, so, and then, you know, you go to your moments and you're like, oh man, like I really miss, I, because I do, I miss performing. And I, and I had these thoughts of like, oh man, did I lose my edge? You know, like, am I going to become like, am I in just full dad mode? Like, you know, there's a certain thing you, you flick on this thing. It's your super persona, you know, you go on stage and I'm like, did I lose, am I going to lose my edge? One year is a long time. I haven't played a show since my last show. Ruby was playing with us, man, in, in uh, uh, Northern California in Redway. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Wow. So he filled in. That's, that's my last time I played, right? That's a long time ago. That was exactly a year ago, I think. Like five, six years ago, right? That was exactly a year ago, right? Like five, six years ago. Wait, five, six years ago? Yeah, 2020, right? 2020 is like five, six years ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see your face and looking at me like, yo, man, yeah, this guy's tripping me. balls. Like, what are you talking about? That's <laughs> what Hilarious. Yeah, it feels like that, man. <laughs> yeah, it, what do they call it? The COVID month is a lot longer than uh, any other month, right? Yeah, right. We're in dog years, man. So, yeah. That's yeah so, I, I, you know, I, every, like, what I believe in is everything you're given. And again, I'm so lucky to be able to say this, but like, whatever you're given, you got to look at it in the way that what you're going to make the best of it, how you can make the best of it. And I have not always lived that way, but I am like, more in it now than ever because I've been meditating every day for how many months, right? Like, I'm in a better place. I'm a better, I'm a, not the same person. I'm a better person. Mm -hmm. it feels, yeah, it feels good, man. I, it feels, life's good for me. Before you, uh, before you started getting into meditation, uh, what were you, what was your, um, uh, what was your advice before that? Like to, you know, relax and, you know. I love weed, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> right? Relax some more. Yeah. 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 That, that, <laughs> that, that, <laughs> right? Like, it's, uh, you know, it, and it still is. Like, I, I love weed. It, it, it opens my heart. And I'm not, you know, like I can, it, it, make, it makes me stoned too. Like, there's no denying that. Like, I listen to music and be like, oh, right, or whatever. But I can also hyper-focus especially when I'm trying to write lyrics, man, Instagram gets on my, like, I'm just on, like, I have these, I want to check, I want to check, and then, so I went, I think I was following all these car sites, right, I had to go take them all off, and I took, like, 300 people off my Instagram, because it's all just, like, like car stuff, and I'm, I'm just wasting time, like, I'm given this opportunity to write music and write stuff, so when I write lyrics and stuff, I can hyper-focus, and it just opens my heart, I've meditated, and it's amazing, it's, it's amazing, I like both, I would prefer to do it, um, you know, clean headed in the morning, mm -hmm. but it, it's, it's just a different thing. Right. And, and so that's my advice, man. Like that's what I go to. And even still before that, I was very much, um, I had like, I had my meditations, you know, and the gym is one, you know, skipping, running, whatever. And I also felt that being in Delhi to Dublin is a meditation, man. It's like going, you have to be in the moment to enjoy that life. It's a lot of, picking up your gear like you know we don't have roadies or a bus mm -hmm. like picking up your gear you know loading in loading out it, it's like you're the one talking to the sound people you're the ones doing them like you know one person's doing the merch mm -hmm. you're the one settling the show it's like your business you're working the business and then you're entertaining at the same time right so it's like you gotta you gotta that's a meditation to be able to be, be in the now most definitely. You know, smoke that joint, <laughs> do your sound check, and be in the now, bro. That's what's up, man. So, did you, so how did you, uh, how did you get into like, you know, music? How did you start your musical journey? Like, where did it all begin? Okay, so I can remember being like little, you know, like kind of like singing songs, like. And I remember this one time because there was a, you know, there was a couple years where I can remember. Yet my brother was at school and I hadn't started school yet. So maybe like four and great or kindergarten, five years old. Right? Kindergarten was half a day for us. So I remember being at home and being like singing song like the radio was on. I'm singing like, like, you know, like Canadian radio, right? It wasn't like a busy station or something. It was like listening to something and I'm singing like my own little version of it. Like this really sad version. I remember this. That was like one memory I have. And I'm like, man, I was like, I was crooning back then, you know, but really, I love singing from forever. Like, it, it's like, the, I was that kid who'd get kind of like, oh, I talk a lot in school or whatever, you know, like I'm a front man of a band, right? I talk. 
it's like, hey, you gotta be quiet. You, you know, you're talking too much. And then I would always be singing, and they have to like, hey, you know, like, you gotta. You, so just singing is all constant. And like, you know, as I get into high school, people start calling me like a jukebox a bit because there's always a lyric in my head. You know, it's like, it doesn't matter what you say, I'm gonna break into a song. Uh, and then I joined choir in grade uh, 11 or 12. It was an elective I could take in high school. So I took choir as a class and I liked it. The teacher was awesome. My buddy was in it. And the co-captain of the volleyball and basketball team with me. But we, we, we took choir because we loved to sing, right? Like um, Punjabi kid and a Filipino kid. Right? Filipino kids love like singing and R&B. And like, it's just it's like cliche, but it's, you know, that's who me and Marvin were. And so we're in choir and then we took vocal jazz as uh, extracurricular. Um, we even went away on a school trip for a choir thing, you know, like that was really fun for an adjudication. And I don't know, we probably did horribly, but it was just still super fun. It was my choir teacher who was like, oh, you have a lovely voice, right? And I was like, oh God, I always like singing, but this means so much to hear this from this person, right? So then after that, I go to university, I go to UBC, and I joined the Bhangra Club. And this is where my whole Desi world opens up. Like up until then, my, my brother had done the same thing. So he was at UBC. So once he got into the Bhangra Club there, he started listening to more and more Desi music and stuff. And, and then I kind of followed the same route. And he was like, yo, man, like I, or I think I said, he said that I said this to him, but he's like, I, I, I saw on one of the, the Desi shows that came on Saturday mornings, we'd watch like Satrang or whatever these shows would come on. And there was an ad for someone who was gonna te who was teaching Thol, and I was like, we gotta go. We gotta. We had this little tin Thol that my grandpa got us from Singapore. I guess it came from India, obviously. I think you guys have seen those, right? Like the tin ones. Yes. It sounded, it sounded pretty cool, actually. Anyway, uh, we had this little thing, and then we ended up going for Thol classes, and then we, we became a part. And that person was Pip Pip Dali. I don't know. He was in Ankarma, the drummer in Ankarma, and he used to be the drummer for Mukit Singh, and. Mm -hmm. So he kind of came to Vancouver or and Sur Surrey with Johnny Kalsi's method of of teaching Thol. It had a syllabus. All the beats were laid out like this. You know, it, it had gone from like now he had like Jal one and two and three, four, five. Like it became very westernized in a way, kind of right. Like, and so I we we started playing Thol, and we were called uh, Thol Connections. Right? Yeah, Johnny Kelsey Stoll Foundation. So we were Stoll Connection. We started playing festivals in Vancouver and uh, a lot of weddings, right? We were, so we're doing Pangra at weddings. We're doing, we're playing Stoll. We might be playing Stoll at a, at a wedding in the morning. You, you know how, you guys know how it goes. And so I'm like 18 or 19, probably like making like at that time, like minimum 150 bucks for an hour of playing Stoll to like maybe 450 bucks over the weekend. Plus at these receptions, they like stay, you eat, you drink and you party with your crew. Like what a fun time, man. So while I was there, they formed a band. You guys, this is the long version. I don't really tell the story too much, but <laughs> you guys getting it. All right. So there was a band formed out of this called Mantra. It was like a boy band out of this crew. So there was a couple of other guys in the band, one me or in, in this drumming, in the whole crew who were like, we should start something. And he's like, yo man, like my, 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 who it was his foot foot or something in, in England writes lyrics or my cousin writes lyrics and we'll just do like B21, man, we'll have a DJ. My brother was like, okay, I'll be the DJ. He doesn't know how to DJ. We were like, we we're just like, let's just go. Because we felt this thing from, we, we were like rock stars at these receptions. And this had never been done before in Vancouver. There was, there was like three tollies up here, Raymond, Raju, and Raju's dad. Maybe Preet Ray, these are you know like really good old players, but mm -hmm. like you know they weren't doing what we were doing. We were doing this like rock star in UK and Glandy thing, right? Like so, we, it was like it was awesome, and so we're like, yeah, okay, we're gonna do this. So that little group we started, this three-person group, ended up becoming Signia, and, and we played nonstop. Like I think we played it twice, and the last time we played it was bonkers. It was so fun. It's still when it was at the rickshaw. That was a fun party, man. So, you know, that that came out of, that's how I started singing, you know, and we were like, just naive. Naive, ignorant in the world of music, and it didn't matter, man. We tried to put a demo together, that demo's terrible. You know, and I just kept banging away, and then I learned how to engineer a bit, 
you know, this is all after graduating from UBC now, like a degree in economics or something. And I, like, I, I, not some, I have a degree in economics. I hated it. I was like miserable. And I'm like, I got to do this. So I'm working at a bank at the same time. Like, this is what I'm trying to do a music career. I'm going to have a music career. And I was horrible, man. We just got better. Just got better and better. Learned how to engineer, learned how to like really track vocals and layering and all this stuff, you know? And, and then next thing you know, I'm like, this is not, this is pretty good. And, and then I got introduced to Delhi to Dublin because Signia had been booked and it was, a, it was like a pre, uh, it was used to what was it called? Like Vancouver International Fund Celebration. VIBC. And yeah. On, yeah, yeah, right, VIBC. So now it's changed and it's rebranded itself 5X. Mm-hmm. And it used to, you know, nonstops come up and played that a bunch of times and stuff. So we were play, we were playing in the in the I think it was called Fungra Love the night before. And I know Jimmy's played that before. And Vicky guys have danced there. And we got hired to play there and as Signia. And so I knew Tarun. That's how I met Tarun. And, and then, and then, you know, he he's like, "Yo, man, like, you know, maybe a year later, two years later, he's like." hey check out this beat he calls me up i was playing basketball right like a, some elementary school or something and he's like yo man check out this beat you think you'd want to come and drop a couple minutes of some punjabi stuff on here i'm like yeah man and it, it was like this fiddle beat and that was dil nuts today the song which is like kind of one of our biggest songs and i was like it was and then this performance happened this 15 minute performance and i sang for like two minutes or three minutes and that's that was at celtic festival in Vancouver, and that's that was 14 years ago, man. And then boom, like it just, my, my world opened the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Like it's been a trip, man. After that, I didn't even know what quinoa was, man, before that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you ever, there you, you go. You ever That's think, a long story, man. You ever think about like, what if, what if you went the other direction and um, used your uh, econ degree and just worked in that field instead? Yeah, I would have had a ton of money, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, outside of the money, like, you know, like your lifestyle, like, you know, the differences between, you know, the artist's lifestyle and, you know, what other people are living, like, like you were saying earlier, like, we're, you know, we all agree with this, like, yo, it's a blessing to do what we do, like, we do it on a smaller local scale and you're doing it worldwide, like, but it's still like a blessing to do this being on stage, like, you ever think about it, what if you didn't have that in your life? what would you know not would, really would, because it would, never would have happened man i never yeah, would have yeah. gone that way because those because i was open enough even at those ages i had i had started reading a lot of you know like i was into deepak chopra and the movie the secret back then and also what the bleep do we know which was all quantum physics but spiritual side of quantum physics at that point i was in i started the rabbit hole journey then because my mom died young, she died right after I was 17. So I went into grade 12 or 12th grade, as you guys like to say, um, and my mom had just died. So my right away, it's like, yo, you got to live your life. It was a YOLO point, you know, like, yo, you just have to, you have to. But at that time, I didn't know what I was going to do. So I went into UBC because my brother went there. I know I had to go to, you know, I had to go to university. There was no question I couldn't. And I, and I wanted to, right? Like. And then I started to realize like, this fucking sucks. I'm not doing this. This is not, and I was in and I was like, okay, I got to do what I got to do. So that whole journey brought me here. I would not have been, I couldn't have done it unless, you know, you know what, I would be an unaware person or had to fight it, but, but then it wouldn't be me. And then this wouldn't have happened either. So no, this is where I got it. Everything in my life has brought me right to this point. And I've thought that more than I've ever thought in my entire life combined. I've thought that more now in these last few months. I just It just makes sense. Everything that's happening. This is where I'm supposed to be. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. It is awesome. So when did, uh, so you met Tarun, uh, he reached out to you and you guys played at the Celtic Festival. So when did you guys decide to make uh, an official group? Um, have you Have you come up here to play festivals? Or is it just Jimmy and Vicky that have come? I've come to a Salmon Arm. We played at okay. the Roots and Blues Festival. It was at Salmon Arm Roots. I, I thought so, okay? So it was at Salmon Arm Roots and Blues Festival, which is about five hours outside of Vancouver, this place. Mm-hmm. And it was at that festival where we decided that we were going to become a band. So we had been in this collective up until that point, which was maybe the next summer or maybe that summer. Uh, it was the next summer. 
Yeah, man. So we had a we had a CD, like a three song, four song EP that we had three songs plus a radio edit of Dill Not Today or something. It was shorter. The original was like seven minutes, and then we had like fifty of those, like one spool of CDRs, and they sold out right after our show spot in like two minutes. Like we and we we're like, what the like, what, what's going on, right? So then we had a meeting in the hotel after. And we're like, yo, I think we should, you know, uh, we were like, what do you guys think? We we're like, okay, should we do this? Should we make it, should we become a band? And we're like, okay, let's do it. So then if everyone here is going to be, at that point, it was Ravi, me, Andrew Kim, who used to play the sitar, the electric sitar, uh, Kyla, the original violinist, or Kaitami, sorry, and T. It was that five. And we're like, okay, we're committed to this. So we're committed to putting the time to make this into a band. And I think that same year we were booked somewhere else, another festival in Van- on Vancouver Island. And at that, before that festival, we had coffee and we said, okay, let's do an album. We're going to finish off an album. Let's set a date. And it was to be finished by November or something like that, that year. So November, 2007, we had an album out and we were a band. Really crazy trip, man. <laughs> Like I got 14 years, like you bringing up 14 years, like I'm just like, whoa, like it, there's a lot of things that have happened. Like, yeah, yeah. When, when I think Delhi to Dublin, I really think back to like the first time you guys came to Nonstop Pangra and how blown away we were by the way you guys were able to fuse Punjabi music uh, with, you know, uh, an Irish influence as well. And also the stage energy that you guys brought. Um, you know, there was nothing else like it at that time. I still can't think of right. anything that, that compares to it now. So, I mean, was that just your guys' chemistry? Did you guys like rehearse or was it just like kind of like a natural phenomenon that just happened on its own? I think it's a bit of everything. Um, you know, it's it's electronic music. Um, Kaitemi is a, was, she was a crazy performer. Like, like you know, what, whatever has happened between the band and her, like she's a crazy performer. I will give her that any day. Uh, I'm a good performer and I also had the same kind of energy during Signia like Signia had that vibe it's just the way it was that's how we were and I you know that kind of came from the dull connection vibe too because we were supposed to ham it up a lot like we learned that and I really caught on to it you know it, it was like how I kind of really came in came into my own uh, and then again Ruv Ruv's a beast and Andrew was novel. Like he did funny things, you know, like kind of like, you know, after a while, it's kind of like, okay, man, like this is a little bit cheesy or whatever. But in the beginning, it was like, this is a really novel thing. You're like a Korean man playing a Indian electric uh, classical instrument. Like this thought, like an electric version, like this is amazing, man. Like, and he just, he just had moments, you know? So that it was this weird chemistry and it was right from the first show that first show we were like oh like there's something here and that was a loose show you know like it was super loose but people in the audience were like what is this like same kind of feeling i guess you're saying it's there was something there and we always said like as the band progressed like we still are able to kill it that way even though we have to do less but that came with the practice over time there's like a confidence that's built um, and we've always said the collective is, has this thing. It's not, we, none of us really take it, you know, we all are doing our parts, but there's always been this outer beast or outer energy or something that's controlling this, this band to do what it needed to do, you know? So that, that's just is what it is. And over the years, you guys have had the opportunity to play at some like amazing music festivals and some crazy stages. Like I remember you guys uh, played at Canada Day at the Capitol in Canada. You, you played at the Winter Olympics as well. Um, what, what was your favorite performance like over the last uh, 14 years? Okay, so the Canada Day one, first of all, I think the first time we played it twice. The first time we played it, I'm pretty sure this was that 2007 before we were even a band yet, okay? So, or maybe it was 2008. No, anyways, it was 2007, Rob's leg was broken. So that's why he wasn't there. So we got, one, I think we got that show because we were one of the only like multicultural bands that existed in Canada, like something that crossed all these genres. So they're like, oh my God, this is going to look great on TV, right? Like that's, that's the, 
honestly why we got that thing like it's it's a spectacle right and that's what the whole thing is but Dave Sharma played that show so we had an American totally fly up to play the show we're like oh yeah we have this thing and he had no idea what he was getting into neither did we we didn't realize it was like over 150,000 people that we were playing to plus nationally televised to ev- the, the country and wherever the troops are so we were like we were it was 2007 man we had like two songs anyway and we had to like write a song for that that performance and it was like what are we even doing here playing to this many people you know like it's not like a bon jovi concert where they're like oh right like fuji rocks but it's like still this is a lot of people man imagine being that fresh and p- playing to that many people it, it was it was that was a, it was a funny story but i don't know man my favorite shows like Burning Man is unreal. If you if you've ever been, if you ever had the opportunity, or if ever again you have the opportunity, to go. You gotta just go to experience what it is. It is, it's a beautiful thing, right? Like the love and the vibes there. It's it's um it's it's a model to be studied, you know, for how we need to bring elements of that into the real world here, because it's it's beautiful. You know, it shows you what a you you know it's like the closest thing to like a utopia I've ever seen. Uh, and it's fucking, it's hella fun, right? Um, and there's been some amazing moments, I think. Like being in Australia, there's a festival called Woodford Festival. And that's the biggest folk festival in the world in terms of it runs five or six days. And we had all these technical issues. And there's a little mini doc on it on YouTube. Uh, it, it's, it's like we had these technical issues, technical issues. And it's like at the end of the day, one of our in-ear monitors was uh, crapping out. So it was sending electrical charge back or something like you know like back down the line and it was and it caused all the power to go down at the height of our show right like we're like ripping it up like one of the best like you you know oh my god we're like everyone's looking at each other we're having the best show of our life and then all of a sudden boom power goes out and they think it's all part of the show sound guys aren't paying attention or anything because rub just started playing the door right away and then we're like holy shit like and then you know anyway the fifth day we finally had no technical issues got it all sorted and played the show that was amazing like i was in tears after you know like so it's like moments you know moments like that like stuff that i will remember like my weed got taken away from me when we went into glastonbury but like this very unofficial unassuming uh young woman like maybe 18 19 years old right and i'm like yo are you gonna take my like come on man you know like those kind of things you know as opposed to what's been the best because it's like you play a good show, man. It doesn't matter where it is. It's like so many. You've been blessed. Played in Bali. That was amazing. And didn't you guys play in India before as well? Oh my God. Playing India was unreal, man. It was the first time stuff like made sense on a different level. Like it's like, it would, it would be like being a band like us who's never played in the West Coast or in California. You know, like it's that, it was that important. What was that vibe like when you were in India? Was it, were they really responsive? Yeah, because the electronic music, boom, no problem, right? India and electronic music is huge. Uh, they, they understand the music, they understand the lyrics. Even if they don't understand Punjabi, they, they're, com- they're comfortable with that, right? Uh, the toll, the sound guys can mix electronic and toll so well. It's not like, you know, it's not like you're fighting this battle, which we've had to do. Like I've had to fight for a long time until it got to a point where we were known and then we made the, you know, we were on their side, they're on our side, they wanted to see us win. So this, that doesn't happen. They know how to mix the instruments. And we just felt like, we felt like rock stars, man. Like playing in Chandigarh, um, the second time we played out there, coming off stage, like five bodyguards each person, and people just want to like come and talk to you and stuff. We're like, oh man, this feels crazy, man. And, um, but playing, there was this one festival called Sula Fest outside of Bombay. Uh, it's in Nashik. And we were part of like, we, we were like international acts, I guess. Like the party act that goes after the headliner. Um, so the first night was Balkan beatbox after. So we had the Balkan beatbox slot. Like that's what we were lined up against, you know? And it was like, came on like huge screen in the back, like pyrotechnics and there's just like, confetti everywhere it was like you just felt it when that stuff's going off you can't help but like raise your bar felt like beyonce up there (laughs) it was awesome 
So after people also played to one person, man, in like Iowa City, you know, like one person, and it was T's birthday one year. So like, you know, I'll never forget that either. So after playing like uh, shows like that, and being on the road and touring, how do you guys? How would you guys come back um, and like hit the studio and write new music? What how, what was that process like for you guys? Um, usually we would block off time. Like it might be like an off an off time, and we're like, okay, we're gonna work on the album from this time to this time, you know. But like even what there's an album we have called Turn Up the Stereo, which is two albums back or three albums back, 2015. So we finished that writing. We had two weeks extra in Bali when we were done. We rented a villa and stayed in the villa, man. We had like a infinity pool. My wife was there. Um, and it was awesome, man. We had we had a chef. We rent we got all we got some people we know there to get us some gear. So we had all the sound gear and set up in this villa, like this really nice villa man. Like and we just finished the album, tracked demos and stuff there, finished the music. Every day we just had a routine. And I never left the house for almost two weeks, man, until we had a show in the city, in the town there. It was wow. amazing. Like just the foods brought to us and made for us there. And then we had an infinity pool and we were working on music in the night. It was it was amazing. So, you know, that kind of like we would make that kind of stuff work. And when we we're in town, you know, we would block off time and we would really, you know, buckle down and get get writing on the album, have jam sessions. It was very rare that you're like, oh, I'm trying to work on the album and be touring. It, kind of hard to be in both spaces so when you come back then you can kind of work on stuff and yeah you get done nice man that's that's really cool so i mean when it comes to like writing were, were you writing most of the music or was it unt uh did you guys work with like other other uh, songwriters as well it changed so in the beginning like we you know there was a full progression as the team and the band grew in terms of like stature, the circle we were running in kind of like thing like that, you know, where in the industry we kind of fit. We started working like, as opposed to T doing the beats, I'm doing like the Punjabi stuff and recording it, sending it to him. And then he kind of finishes it off or whatever. It became to the point where we're starting to now get into rooms with publishing people, like, you know, having sessions, like we were in Toronto. So we're like, okay, our management would set up as many sessions as we could get with different writers or whatever, or writers we had, we already knew get into a room and we would be writing tracks. And then it, so it became very, okay, we, we got a set a four hour session with this guy and let's, we got to write a song. Like the song has to be written in this time. And then we go back and, you know, production and finish lyrics, but this is, we need a song, like the structure. So it became, it was cool and interesting. I don't necessarily, I had some good times. I don't necessarily love that way too, because it became very business. Mm. Um, I felt like, you know, and like these people were fast. I felt like it, it wasn't uh, that I'm lazy. Like I upped my game, right? Like I, it, it upped my game and I would still pr like to practice that. But now I feel I'm in a, in a place where I like to just do it the way I want to do it. And I have a different way. I like to really vibe out and record everything and vibe out to that and feel the, the stuff I like. And then like, and then play with it like I chop and paste and like it's like um, I'm playing a game you know like I'm playing Lego with vocals like Ravi I don't know how you like you know like I don't know a lot of times they see songs like the songs are written you know so I don't know how you how do you produce uh, it varies I mean some singers will just hop on a beat and they'll kind of if they write their own lyrics they'll write to yeah. it other times they already have like a composition made and we'll make a beat around it so it really just it, it depends on the person right yeah, like this, like right now, man, what I'm feeling, and this is what we used to did for the We're All Desi album. We did a lot of this with me and James, our guitarist at the time. I had a lot of fun doing this with him. We would just get on the mic, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd set up the session, go get a coffee, like make a ritual out of it, man. I'd go get a coffee, I'd, like I'd, I'd smoke a bowl and be like, okay, we're ready to go. But the, like everything would be set, right? Like all the reverbs or everything set. I just got to put the headphones on and we would just like, go for it he would just and he's a crazy engineer so he would just track it all and we we're like man I remember he'd kind of keep track of some things but not wreck a vibe just go for it and we like take the parts we like put them together you know that's really fun and that's what I do now and it's because now I'm at a point where I feel I'm bonus time man. I could do whatever I want to do because I don't have an audience so I might as well just have joy from the music I'm making so that's how I do it now I still you know I still want to have a song structure and but it's like how I'm getting there it's less um, business-like. 
Yeah, that's really good. I mean, that leaves more room for creativity and, uh, you know, for you just to be yourself. But yourself. I think so. I think so, man. And I really feel like when I get into that zone and I just like kind of like really zone out, I can, I can, I can start to channel stuff. Like it comes and I'm like, I just got to sing this. How I just got to get the emotion out and I don't worry about it. It'll come to me later. And now I've gotten to the point where the confidence is there. Like I just, tr I trust my process so much that I sit and I, sometimes I usually go about five tracks. And I'm, I lay out five tracks and I'm like, okay. And I sit down and I'm like, the song's in here. Now, I, and I just sit and then I just go for it. I just start, I just start putting and I just, it just kind of comes together. And I'm like, ah, I'm not going to overthink this because I'm not in control. Like, it's just happening. And I just know that the song's in there now. And it's there. I have usually have three parts. I'll have some three hooks. I don't care what it is. And I kind of put them together and they make in. It's, I don't know, man. I don't know what's happening. So I'm, I'm doing my voodoo producing or whatever it is, you know, and then the producers I'm working with really are liking what I like. There's a thing like I'm working with a bunch of different people and it's, it's working. This vibe's working. So right. I stick with uh, it. Yeah. Is it all about like, you know, where you're, where, you, where you are? Like, are you always in the same place physically in the same place or do you like to do, you know, say, okay, like, I'm not feeling it here today. Let me just go outdoors and try to work on something outdoors. Or is it always in, you know, your, your studio, your physical space that, you know, you're comfortable in? Now it's, I mean, since February, it's been my space. It's been yeah. here. Um, I haven't gone anywhere. I think I had, I think once maybe in, <clears throat> or maybe in the summer when things had chilled out, uh, I had to finish off one, uh, one set of final vocals and I went in to a studio to finish those. Mm. Um, and that's and then I have gone back since. So everything else is done, and this is my studio right here. So this is like 200 feet from the house. Um, this is where I can make all the noise I want to make, man. No one, there's only cows in the field behind me. <laughs> so I'm chilling. Nice. So Sanjay, uh, you know, obviously Dilly to Dublin was a you know amazing time uh, in your career, and you know we've we've seen you all all throughout like for me personally you know the only show i've ever seen of you live is at you know the fillmore in san francisco which is you know such a prestigious venue i know we touched on some of the more you know uh, uh, memorable uh memorable places you played at but i know that was one for me i was like man you know these guys are these guys are punjabi you know they're playing here at the biggest venue in maybe on the west coast right so we were so pumped my wife and i was also canadian so she so she was wanted to be there fully supportive right and i think jimmy i think jimmy played that day as well i think yeah he, jimmy played man so you know it was it was just electric man it was dope we loved it was it. it was one of the highlights man the fillmore right you guys know like i don't know you don't have to say anything like i i remember like a long time ago i don't know what it was you know i probably played a show at like 10 15 Falsum or something like you know me and rubby afterwards like or our Ruby walking around, probably like, man, I want to play. Like, I'm just saying something. I want to play one more one day, man. And I did that, man. Like, <laughs> that's is crazy. And then the next goal was like, I want to sell out the film more, man. But like, just to be, in, you know, just like the way the promotion works and stuff. Like, you have, you can't just get in there. They, the offer has to come in to the agent, and the offer comes in from the promoter, and then they say, Dude, we want them for the film more, and it's like, whoa. Like, okay, like this is. This is crazy. This is it. Um, and the other one for us is the Commodore Ballroom in Vancouver. That's mm. that's the venue, man. And I think I've played that seven times. Wow. And you, like that, that's that's insane. I like that's man. Like I like I can retire, man. I don't. That's why I say I'm in bonus time. You know, like I there's I've reached a level, and it's like I'm a, I'm not known, right? Like Delhi Dumb's not a huge band. But even still, what we've done, I'm at a point in my, my career where I can go, I've done what I need to do. Like I've, I've felt it, I've felt that magic, man. Like I've played in Lafayette, Louisiana, you know, this where I, I just, I've had those rock star moments, like just feeling that, being in the song, right? So like being able to be in bonus time now is, is a magical thing. And now that, you know, I have no, nothing else is happening. I'm not touring. I just get to be doing what I want to do. Like I said, I feel like this was just given to me. Pretty crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. 
It sounds like dreams come true, man. I mean, when you're walking around with Robbie talking about, hey, we want to play at Phil Fillmore, and then one day you're, you're there, you know, you're playing there. That's that's amazing to see. It is, it is amazing, and it does, it happens. Like, it, it happens, man. Like, you know, I put my, I put my ass off. Like, I had fun doing it. Like, I was doing, like, it, it works. You know, the whole thing, like, the, the being miserable at university and, like, in just being like, no, I got to, you know, playing that game, it worked. And there was resistance a lot of the time. So, like, it could have even gone crazier. Like, and I still can, you know, like, it, it, things can happen so quickly. But it happens when those, when it's like you got to get in that mode. You got to really accept that flow and it'll, it happens. And yeah, one cool thing about D2D uh, that I noticed um, is that you guys have a very loyal fan following too. I remember when I played with you guys last year, there was a mother and son that came um, and they had been to multiple events and, and the son basically grew up watching you guys. He's 16 that, that now, man, he drives. And when we met him, he was a little kid. And like, we sent him a birth, we sent him birthday wishes, like a video where they made a compilation video and we were on the list to make him a birthday video. Like, I send him pictures of like lowered Miatas and stuff like that. Cause now he's got a Miata. Like he's like all in, he wants to get, you know, like hella flush and all this. And I'm like sending him pictures and stuff. And then, you know, I've sent a few, like I'm not chilling with him every day, but it's like, yo man, like he's my, he's like, he's like a buddy. If I see him, I'm so happy to see him. You know, like, yeah, he grew up, he grew up on us. And what was that experience? That's like? crazy too, man. Fuck, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. But what was that experience like for you guys though? Like connecting with fans and keeping in touch with them over the years, uh, watching your fan base grow, you know, seeing their loyalty. I, I don't know, man. It's interesting, right? Like, like, yeah, man, like, we have some, like, okay, we have this joke that if Rub, Rubby was ever to have like a party with all of our favorite fans, like the long-term fans, that party, I mean, we always say it's his party too, because it's like, like these, you know, these really eclectic characters become his buddies, like his blazing buddies or whatever, right? Like we've got Roy, Roy and Julie in Santa Cruz. And, you know, they have the RV called the Crazy Horse and they come out, they come out every show, man. They drive the RV out and they park in Santa Cruz. You're allowed to park an RV because it becomes a home so you can blaze in it and drink on the road because it's treated, I don't know if it's all California or I don't know, but this, when we found this out, we're like, what? So you just park here and then you can party. He goes, yeah, and the cops all know him and he, he's this older man who wears a tutu and just giving her, man. And like, we love him. We love him, man. They, they made sure they came out to our show at Burning Man, every single show they were at. Like, we played six shows in 52 hours. They were at every single one. Like, you know, like there, there's these crazy characters that are just, man, you know, I don't know. I, I, I wish, I wish that people would go through life meeting the, uh, these kind of people because these people are like, they're just like love beings and people consider them like, oh, you know, a little off kilter or not, but they're not, they're just love beings. And you're like, wow. And it's scary for some people, I think, but like we've partied with these amazing people and I love that we have that relationship over the years you know like it's supposed you know like you know you see some people a lot and you're like okay cool but these these there's we select people in every city we have you know one like one guy our buddy in milwaukee like this guy you know like but he's our buddy man and he like, just blowed off firecrackers for his birthday like crazy and then the cops came and we were like oh my god like <laughs> what are we doing like man and the neighbors yelling at us and you know this is before trump days because now man it's a lot scarier but like it was it was just like you know we have these these crew of people that we've gotten to know over the years and made these posses and it's like that's really cool because it's like it's interesting when i talk to my wife sometimes she's like you have this whole other life that i don't like these people you talk to like i'm like yeah they're my homies like but i only see them when i'm in milwaukee or when i'm in toronto you know i go down to san francisco i got like there's like certain people you're gonna see you know so it, i'm Again, I've lived a really awesome, cool life that's just, you know, not the norm for a lot of people. And that's been amazing, just being a part of that. So that's uh, Sanjay and Dilly to Dublin, but uh, tell us about today. Tell us about Sanju. We want to know about 
that new vibe that you got going on. I know that you just recently dropped a, a new single. And uh, tell us a little about that. Like, is there, what's the reasoning behind the, the new branding, the, the new, that's almost like, I guess it's, I guess you're going solo. I guess it's fair to say you're going solo. What's the reasoning behind yeah, that? Yeah, man. Um, the reason is, it's just, I've never done it. I've never had the desire to do it. And now I have the desire to do it. So that's it. So I'm going to do it. And now, the, and I'm doing the music that's like really like, is, is me, you know, like, um, I'm doing, I'm doing me now. Delhi to Dublin is not me. Delhi to Dublin is, uh, I'm a part of Delhi to Dublin. And Delhi to Dublin is a part of me, right? Like it's like, the, it, it's a relationship I have with this other entity, which I'm a part of. So it's like being a planet in the gal, in, in the galaxy of the Milky Way, when you're looking out at the Milky Way, right? Like you're looking at the thing that you're in, like, <laughs> but like, but like that's, you know, this is what I'm, this is what really resonates with me and what, what's coming out of me. I didn't set out to necessarily do this. I kind of had a feeling going into my first studio day. So I have my, my crew, right? Like we all have our crew. So I got my crew, man. Like these, this, this, this is like my crew from like when I was 18. So I've known them for like two, three years, right? Yeah. <laughs> and like... I know I was talking to one of them and I have a lot of respect for his music, you know, what, what we're listening to and, and what we're exchanging and stuff like that. Like he's very relevant right on the pulse, you know, like, and I'm like, yo man, this is what I'm thinking. I thought where I would go with this would be more like happy sync. I thought I'd be in that world, little less hip hop, more singy, but in the world of like happy sync, kind of switching between English and Punjabi, you know, kind of like Delhi to Dublin, but like a pop vibe. And he's like, yo, that's a, that's a great re reference, by the way. I, I agree love the same to have happy singing, like that whole Daku's and uh, death jam vibe they had back in the days. Like, I, I love it, man. Like there's a lot of really good music out there right now, you know? So I was like, this is where I think he's going to go. And he's like, no, nah, man, like, He's like, you gotta go for it, man. Like, you gotta go, you gotta do your thing. That's, it's like, and he just looked at me and goes, that's not your thing, man. And I'm like, next day, I'm like, okay. You know, I'm like, I'm like, okay, cool, man. But I'm not gonna know, like, just listen to you. I'm like, okay, I got it. We, you know, I get to the studio and I'm working with Kultar. Kultar got bounces his name. He's just putting out like, he's kill, he's killing it, man. He's been producing since he's 11, right? He's been producing for like 16, 17 years already. He's still new and he's like a vet, man. Like he's just crazy. Like I love working with, you know, all, I'm working with Hark too. I don't know if you guys know Hark, but he's part of the Decibel. He's a beast, man. And Skinny Local. Like he just put out, anyway, he, anyway, I'm very lucky to be working with a bunch of really awesome people, but get in there. And the vibe that, this is what the, the vibe that came out. It just came out, it came out so naturally and effortlessly. The, first one was written in an hour and I've never done that in my life written a song in an hour it, you know it's a pretty simple song but it's just we caught a vibe man and then the song was tracked and recorded and done mixed within four hours oh, wow. and I was like holy shit man the next time I went in there and I looked at him I go man I go, we set the bar pretty high he's like ah oh, don't worry you know whatever like and we we almost did the same thing but the song was much better I think it, well it's hard to say I kind of like that first song too but like and we did it. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know. And I would vibrate, man. When I was there, I had these vibrations and I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but I feel alive. I felt alive and I never felt this before. And it was just this, like these, like these sex songs coming out, man. Like I want people to smoke weed and fuck to my music. Like that's what I want. <laughs> Simple, it's clear, right? And then, and have fun. But it's, it, but the energy is the same as Delhi to Dublin. It's, it's love. It's just the delivery is different. You know, like it's still elevating you but it's like, it's like making love as opposed to like energetically getting you. You're still going to get there, man. You're going to get a high from this. That's what I want, man. So it's just, and it just came out. Like I said, it just flowed. It just came through me. Like I, I, it, it, this is what it is. And I'm like, this feels right. Every, every kind of piece of content that I'm putting out or anything I've done in singles, I'm like this. Yeah, of course this feels right. So I'm, that's what this is happening. Man. I'm just in the flow and I'm going with it. I can't even take, I don't have to take full credit. Like I didn't know it was going to happen. 100% man. Uh, one of the, one of the, you know, my favorite things about you as a, as a singer, as a vocalist is the way that you effortlessly blend English and Punjabi in a way that it's so kind of easy, very easy for me in particular to understand. 
is that something we'll see in your future songs or is it more English, more Punjabi or still blend or what? I mean, I feel I would never say no. <clears throat> My thing is now though, that I think I'm, I just want to sing in English. Yeah. And the reason why is because the stuff that I want to do, there is people that can do it better than I can. But it, but what I'm still lo love to do and am doing is collaborating with Punjabi artists still. But I would do my thing, and my thing is because I'm like I'm writing the lyrics too. And with, when it comes to Punjabi, my writing becomes limited, right? Because my vocabulary gets it's yeah. limited, and my level my level of comprehension. I think in English, so I don't think in Punjabi. I have to kind of tra kind of technically translate for higher comprehensive conversations, and for like household conversations yeah i can think in punjabi but those are like very simple things and and i don't speak punjabi at home like i don't have anyone to speak punjabi with my dad you know he speaks english so it's like he's more comfortable speaking no no he's not more comfortable because he it's just with us he's just always spoke english it's just is our thing you know like that's just the dynamic right right so that's that's kind of where i come from and i'm like this is the mu like the music i want to make isn't punjabi but I love collaborating with and being in that same genre, but you know, like, cause then I'm still in that world. Cause it's still important to me for sure. I think also just my visibility in a pop world is also important as a, just a brown, you know, as a brown guy doing pop music. Definitely. So for your uh, upcoming music, I mean, in next year in 2021, are you planning on, you know, it, do you have a plan of how many releases? Is it going to be a lot of new music, or are we you know sprinkle some here and there leading up to an album? What, what's the what's the game plan? I got lots of new releases, man. Yeah. I'm putting out everything one every four to six weeks for the next year for sure, if not more. I already have enough music for almost two years worth of releases if I do singles every four to six weeks. Does that ever stop? Does that ever stop you guys as artists? Like, yo, I have so much music, and uh, are you just gonna continue making more? Or do you have yeah, and it'll get better, and then maybe some you don't leave some will just fall to the wayside as you can, as you get better, and yeah. or you just put them out. Like it does, it's kind of like it doesn't matter, but like as long as you're good and you like them, put them out, right? Uh, and I and I know I, I'm playing the game, man. Like hmm. you have to feed this algorithm right now. But I'm not just putting out stuff for the sake of putting out. I actually like every single one of these tracks. I'm like, yeah, that's dope. That's dope. That's dope. So I'm gonna put them out. Over, over the past like 14 years with Delhi Double and you know your solo stuff, like, have you ever had like, do you have any music that like was done so long ago and you thought never would turn into a thing? All of a sudden, like last year, it turned into something amazing. Like, you know, production that you've done or songs that you guys have done. When and you passed up on it, and then all of a sudden it just came back out. Like it's the, it's the, you know, it just not surfaced. Not super, not a lot. Mm. Uh, for this project, there is one song that I worked on, maybe three, maybe four years ago. But was it like, did you did you think it was gonna be a part of the project, or was it? No, it was oh, kind of yeah. like, okay, this is done, and I'm like, oh man, I, mean, I still like this one, you know. And that one never quite made it into the D 2 D world. It was like kind of rejected originally. It was too. It didn't work. And that's kind of you know. And it was in this kind of vein. Um, the song ended up being quite different, but it's still this. The vibe is still there. And nice. that kind of that one resurfaced. Uh, there's a couple others from like a, a few like D 2 D songs that didn't make the last album, but work for what I'm doing. Um, so those there's a couple there's a few of those. But otherwise, not really, man. Like not really old stuff because once it dies, it just kind of dies. It just goes, and you're like, you've moved on. Yeah, we noticed that with, like Punjabi music too, like working with like writers and stuff, and you know, not a lot, a lot of the new writers now are like, yeah, this song has a lifespan of six months, and they want it produced right now. So it's not really like it's more of like how you were talking about turning into a business, just a production house. Right. They need to get it out now, and. Ravi, you noticed that too, like some writers, they'll just, they'll write like based on, everyone's talking about Snapchat right now, let's write about Snapchat. Like, so the, the lifespan of those, like I've seen that on like straight, like, you know, folk Punjabi music and yep. that kind of stuff. And, uh, but I've noticed with like other artists, like, uh, you know, I work with, um, you know, I hang with Fateh a lot. So I, I've seen with him, like, yo, know, all of a sudden, like old ideas will come back and they're cool. I mean, they're not, you know, they're not using the same stuff but it's the old idea just resurfaced and it turned into an amazing thing and i always curious like yo do you just stop once you have like two years worth of stuff and take a break but it doesn't seem like uh, that's the way it rolls with you either right 
No, because I'm like, what do you want to do? Okay, you're forced in lockdown, mm-hmm. and you can, you know, like, what did I turn to? Like, all I want to do is to make music. Like, I just love doing it. I just love tracking demos and writing these songs right now. Like, if I had all the money in the world, this is what I would. I would just my studio would look sick. <laughs> But I would be in here trying to make more music, you know, like because it's really what I love doing. So I don't want to do anything else, you know. I only, I, and if I have to feed the algorithm, I, I have enough stuff. Let's just do it then. Why not? Nice. The bigger my catalog, the better. Like awesome! I can't wait. Like right now, there's only two songs. I can't wait for people to be like, "Holy shit!" There's like 15, six songs, one after another. These are all amazing. Like, I think they're great. And that's all that matters, right? Like, that's all that matters. Nice. So, but I know that's all that matters, but outside of music. It's all that matters, man. No, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. I mean, that's what, that's what Ronnie says too, man. But outside of music though, outside of music, let's talk just a little bit of fun. What, what, are, you, what are you doing other than meditation? Bitcoin. Bitcoin. <laughs> Okay, it's gonna okay. save the world, man. It's gonna save the world. It's gonna be your insurance system against this Ponzi scheme. That's all I'll say about that. <laughs> I do have a degree in economics, so I can, you know, there you go. Nice, nice. All right, sorry, what was the question, man? No, I'm just, yeah, I'm messing with you too. Like, I'm just, you know, like, you know, we all know we, you do music, you do great music. Uh, what else do you do for fun? Uh, well, I got a kid. He's five now, man. He's in kindergarten. So, you know, he takes up a lot of time making Lego and stuff like that. Like that's, you know, I I get to be home. I've always got to be home with him so much. I've co-parented right from day one, right? Like you go away for tour, but you're not, we don't do tours like, like world tours. You know, we go for two weeks and come home and summer's the festival season every weekend you're away, but every weekday you're home, right? Like you're gone four days, five days, you're home for like eight to 10 every day right like if i worked nine to five i'd be away way more yeah. you know then so i get you know that takes up a bunch of time um there's not you know going to the gym i really love trail running that's my new thing running on trails man like running on the road is like this is like night and day it's like riding it's so fun you have to be so present to make sure you don't step on roots and stuff like that mm. it's it's you're in the now it's so it's really fun i really enjoy it i feel like i'm in the forest here man like i'm like that Ewok. is that something you do on the island or is yeah. it uh, <clears throat> nice yeah. so like so you were saying something about like out backyard like you got some cows back there like no okay oh, i don't have cows so not you not you cows. but close by right <laughs> so our neighbor's lot is a agricultural lot it's a, it surrounds us and he's got cows we've got uh like to my left here there's a blueberry patch and then a, and so that's all fenced in for the birds so the birds don't get to it and there's a blackberry patch that we saved before cutting down a bunch of grass and we got the garden over there and then we got just grass like you know nice. I, got, I got it's pretty crazy man what pretty i got cool going views. on here. pretty cool views <laughs> uh i don't have water view or anything but i have a very open sky nice. so seeing stars and meteor showers and stuff here is it's amazing it's just pitch black no no light from the from the city amazing yeah man and then so and now because i'm here full time when i go into vancouver it's like super amazing like holy shit vancouver is so crazy man like you know i just want to eat food and stuff like that but so yeah man i think basically like i don't have a ton of time um you, you know you go to the gym you make your music and then you got to run the business side of things too so and then, and then hanging with the kid and stuff so that's about it man i do snowboard i haven't snowboarded in two years but i've been snowboarding for like you know well over half my life nice um so i'm pretty you know i was pretty good at I'm a pretty good snowboarder um since Vail bought a, a whistler it's just like the price is just crazy man i can't you know it's just too expensive ruby uh gt have you any of you guys ever snowboarded uh yeah i have a few times not very good at it though how about you gt I also have, and I also suck. Uh, <laughs> all the mountains there, so I'm very familiar with Vale, uh, Mount Seymour, usually where we go close by. Uh, is that where you usually go, Whistler? Uh, I would go Whistler or Cypress with my kind of go tos. Nice. Yeah, What's your, what's your skill level? Are you are you black home? Are you like hard? Uh, I mean, I'm a snowboarder, so I mean, I can do blacks, no problem. But it's not as fun because the blacks are going to have moguls. 
so moguls are no not really not really fun you know what i mean but if it's like a powder black i can handle a powder black no problem unless you're like heavy set like me and you just crash right through the moguls and you know like right like, kind of fun but <laughs> and, and I, I can just bomb that. I can get bomb down a mountain, but I've been doing it for a long time. Man. Yeah. Like, really long time, you know. Now I'm getting older too. I gotta be careful, man. I, I like it's not a joke. Like I gotta be careful, like take care of myself because I want I want to be able to do this for a long time. Most definitely. Famous old people words, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sanju, so tell us uh you want to shout out any uh anything to the uh, non-stop fans i mean they all miss you guys they miss you. yeah we miss we miss it man like especially like i would love to be at a non-stop party right now Shit. people pulling oh. on my pants and stuff like you know oh. i'd like that that'd be awesome but i uh, yeah you know keep uh keep positive there's a lot of awesome things happening in the world right now as you know even though as dark as things are it, it, things are being shed light on so you know people are having a rough time or anything keep keep your head up because the world kind of works in cycles and we're this is all part of it like there's going to be some amazing times coming up and so keep your head up there and for me check out my new music please like um Daily Dub actually put out a brand new album before everything kind of went down like we had an album called We Got This so check that out I think it's the best album we ever put out and for my stuff, Sunju Galaxy, Sunju, S-N-J-U. Uh, Sunju Galaxy is my handles for everything. I'm on every platform. If you check out my songs on Spotify and all streaming platforms, they're up. Go check me out. YouTube, it's all there. Instagram, boom, boom. I'm also on. Nice. Rob, are you still a host? I'm Ruck, 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 Ruckus Avenue Radio, Sunju's Cam Life. I got a show on there too, man. So check that out on Fridays. If anyone wants to, I kind of play... You know, kind of like that stoner chill Punjabi stuff too, like and then, and then some electronic stuff, and then the harder and I play the harder Pangra stuff, you know, like the Sidhu Musiala and stuff like that. I like that stuff. Gangster. Yeah, I like I like that man. Like I know I know you know I'm not always saying that the lyrical content's awesome or anything, but whatever, man, they're allowed to express themselves however the fuck they want to, and the music it sounds sick. That actually that actually makes me curious though. What's uh what's um what's on your what's a few of your top songs on your playlist that you like to listen to like if you're taking a drive or something st john 100 percent st john yeah. i've been i'm st john man i am molecularly connected to that individual i believe um he resonates with me like nothing else and i was like i was supposed to see him in on march 18th before the right before the borders close in seattle i was supposed to go down and it was like a thousand venue a thousand person venue and now he's like he just blew up anyways st john travis scott um gunna i'm ending up listening to a lot of gunna right now you know it's just happening and that's like pretty awesome um a lot of hip-hop a lot of hip-hop hip man um there what else man like do you yeah. like the weekend? I love the weekend. I, I I hear a lot of weekend and and, and like type influence in your new stuff. I hundred percent, man. Especially like when before trilogy, when the, the three albums dropped for free in like two thousand eleven, I was listening to that on repeat. So like the weekend, man. I listen to Blinding Lights. So okay, when we when we come in from my island to Vancouver to Tawasin there, the ferry terminal, the, the mm. our ferry, you have to exit from the the vehicle deck. So you're standing. And this big door opens up, right? And you're just standing on this deck. There's cars behind you and there's people here waiting. And so you're pulling up into the dock and you see this big port. There's a big port in Tawasin for all the the, the, the big freighter tr ships and stuff. And then there's the ferry terminal. So it's not, if it's nighttime, you see all these lights and this big ferry doors opening it up. And I was, right then I would time and put blinding lights on. And it just felt like I'm like coming to this this thing, man. It was sick. So I, that was that was my theme music every time. Now now I don't. What's what's the name of the island that you live on? Uh, Galliano. Galliano. Um, otherwise, I'm also listening to on the Punjabis. Oh, there's some local artists. They're killing it, man. There's like some Trey Six, Rave, and Kid Sharif, and those are all people produced by Cool Thought God Bounce as well. And uh, man, I'm loving that vibe. Um, Happy Sing, Ria Raj. There's, there's a, there's like a lot of these. You know who's coming out with songs? That like Swami. Mm. Like old school Swami? No, yeah, like old school Swami is coming up with like a lot of trap stuff. 
interesting. Like English singers and stuff like that too. And I'm like, he's got a whole bunch of singles that I'm like, these are awesome. So anyway, that's kind of where I'm at, man. Nice, nice. Well, that's what's intense. Up, oh, I like it. I love. I'm listening to a lot of intense stuff. Sorry, man. I had to get that one. AP Dylan. That stuff's good, man. Without fire. Yeah, that's yeah, right. GT, GT loves that stuff. Toxic, man. Toxic. <laughs> so good, man. Yeah, for sure, man. Sanju, man, I, I appreciate you joining us, man. This was pretty awesome, man. Good to hear about like how you began and uh, you know what you're working on now, and um, you know hopefully uh, hopefully we all get to like rock out a stage together again, you know, soon, man. The sooner the better because it's been pretty. Uh, we've been trying to figure out what to do with ourselves lately, uh, right? Yeah, you know, like I've been hanging out with GP a little bit here and there, and we chat with Ruby, and it's like, dude, we we need to get on a stage and. Yeah, so we're getting the itch. We're getting I the hear itch. You, man. I hear you soon, bro. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate this. Good stuff, man. Nonstop appreciates you and um, best of luck. Right on, brothers. Take care. Thanks, Sanjay. Thanks, bro. Good seeing you. Thank you, man. Peace out.